Hey, I'm Tyler Edlin. I'm back with another episode of the Brush Sauce Theater. I got a special guest today, Orion Vang. Oh, hey. Uh, my name is Orion Vang. Uh, I'm a 19 year old concert artist, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Damn, man, I didn't know you were that young. I, I am jealous of your youth. That is that is a good age. Well, thank you. Yeah, I started out doing this stuff when I was about 16. Oh, my goodness. So, yeah. So it's you've, been quite come, a... you've come up to the, the portfolio that I'm at here at your art station, which people definitely should follow because you're, you're really good. Thank you. <laughs> Especially, I mean, I didn't even know what I was doing with my life at your age, and to think you've already, like, come this far, like, that is really, um, that's really respectable. It really is. Man, I appreciate that. Yeah, because uh, I guess it just has to do with a lot with uh, being around good people and... You know, getting getting to see awesome guys like you on YouTube, because uh, you know, I watch you and a, a lot of things too growing up. Mm -hmm. That's that's who I watched. He's he's a generation ahead of me. I watched a lot of things too when he was putting out his Nomen his Nomen School DVDs at like fifty to sixty bucks per little <laughs> per little lesson. So it's like uh, and that stuff. Days. He's putting that information all out in in huge scopes on his YouTube for free now. You know, sometimes of the same duration, like it's all like, oh, that would have been. Si I, I look at all his videos when I watch it. I was like, that was sixty bucks, sixty bucks. <laughs> like, there goes all my, um, you know, my teen savings, <laughs> or you know, when I, you know, early twenties anyway. But yeah, very. No, very... that like uh, too. This Who really cheap tutorial? Uh, Gumroad tutorial. Yeah, well, those are amazing. Now those are. I think those only came out like a two years ago or so now, but those are amazing. Those are probably the most efficient way to learn because you can just snipe little lessons to kind of fill in your weaknesses and, you know, they're kind of geared to your interests. Oh, heck yeah, I'd binge on those. Like uh, some of the good tutorials, I'll uh, spend a few days just watching the same one over and over just yeah, so I can get and get Yeah, a good you idea. gotta watch it multiple times, take notes, and put it to practice because uh, I think that's something that I've, I've been guilty of in the past too. Sometimes you just watch it and you don't put it right to use it, it's not the same as practicing <laughs> right you, you got to get hands-on with this stuff yeah it becomes a uh, stamp collecting at some point so you gotta really <laughs> have the initiative to do it yeah uh, but anyways you have <laughs> I, I got you on here today because we're gonna talk about some of your keyframe art your stuff is really awesome I love it. it it's very different than a lot of the stuff I typically do and I thought you were just the perfect guy to have and, and kind of showcase your workflow on this week's episode so yeah we're, we got a video we're gonna roll that and you're just gonna walk us through some of the process that you've kind of constructed you know for some of um, for some of your images because I'm sure by by this point you're kind of nailing you know a bit of a workflow oh yeah thank you yeah um, well, I guess for starters you know I always well the, the whole point of this project that I did recently was to help me get out of my comfort zone like whether, because I'm always used to painting day scenes, as you can see in my earlier work. So uh, uh, I figured, you know, I've never done a night painting. Oh, the night paintings are tough, man. Uh, I never tried out this and that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It, it was a process. It took me uh, probably just until so, these ones. Are these all thumbnail sketches or just uh, t tell us this spread? This is like a huge amount of sketches. All right. So uh, for starters, I usually start off the script, so, uh, you know, nothing too dedicated. It's just something short to help drive the story and to give me uh, some more ideas. And uh, for this project, you know, I'd never done anything grounded, nothing military like. So I figured, you know, why not start off with that? Uh, so that way it can bridge me towards more of a sci-fi and uh, or like industrial sci-fi type of genre. So. Uh, so once I have my story down, I generally like to draw a lot of sketches to kind of help me get an idea of what I, I can do next. And uh, these sketches aren't really final as well. You know, they're always just there to give me a general idea. And uh, if there's something that has a good composition that I like, and uh, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be there. Like, the idea doesn't have to be there. It could be something extract. And if it gives me, like, an idea or if it has, like, a potential to uh, create something better, then I'll take that and then... Uh, clean it up a little bit better or build it up in 3D and go back and, and draw on top just to kind of figure it out where I want things to be. So this is almost like a, like an entire storyboard sequence for your idea. Yeah, pretty much. That's awesome. It's, uh, 
Because uh, all I want is just the idea. I don't really care about the, the aesthetic of the drawing and how good it looks. Yeah, absolutely. So um, with those, now, would you generally find your favorite, you know, your favorite frames? And then you're, um, you're going to work to build those up and plan them out. So uh, the, uh, the, top, uh, the top right, that's all the little rough sketches. Mm -hmm. And uh, the top bottom... Uh, those are just uh, design sketches that sort of help me, or the, well, they're the more cleaner sketches. It's just to help me uh, try to come up with ideas or concepts. So, so this uh, is still planning and kind of just 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 raw drawing, right? You have you jumped into any kind of three D or anything? Are there any other external application yet? Yeah, for the the top right one with the little platform panel with the wires, the big wires and everything, I jumped into three D for that one, and I kind of drew it on top of that. It's a uh, yeah, because at this point, like I want to make sure all the planning is done first before I jump into a painting. Because uh, for this project, I was still trying to figure out a good process too. It's a, uh, it's because uh, I know a lot of people they work differently. Like um, a lot of the guys at Naughty Dog, they like to paint with silhouettes and then you know make it all pretty looking. And then they uh, uh, shoot, they, they, yeah, they shoot for the design after, and then they throw the design on top. Yeah, but so I played with that. It seems like you're really planning for, you know, a function and, you know, very kind of specific design, you know, elements, whereas you're not like, I'm just going to design a mood and right, you're going to get the, the design to fit like the mood and the shapes. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, uh, I come from an architectural background, so I have more of a, of a technical approach. Like we always start off with a drawing plan first mm -hmm. and they kind of have like an overview of what the map or the layout might be. And then we'll uh, start designing everything as it is and then we'll set up camera points to kind of figure out what composition looks best and then we'll uh you know jump straight to 3d for that and then render it and try to create a finished look so were all these scenes here uh these were all derived from your initial batch of sketches is that correct yeah they were they were all some were adjusted and some uh kind of looks the same and these were like a mix of uh photos in 3d to kind of get them at this level Yep, I uh, I like to do like a quick photo bash or a quick block out scene in 3D, mm -hmm. and then uh, I'll throw it to Photoshop, and I'll just like uh, toss in shadows, toss in light, uh, kind of colors dodge here and there. Yeah, the set dressing. So, yeah, pretty much, and it's just trying to kind of figure out how I want the mood to be, and uh, for the most part, I actually didn't pick. Uh, I only picked about uh, two, one or two of these. I think that's just the process it takes. Wow. Well, that that is you know that's a ton of um that's a ton of work that you definitely kind of committed to on this and a, well a lot of planning which I which I think you know shows in in your final images like like it, it always is worth the effort you know to kind of plan properly yeah I feel like uh for me it's a lot funner that way and plus uh, you don't you don't ever hit an art block if you have everything planned out before you it, paint I can I can relate to this so hard and th which is why like my um, my general personal work that I, I upload and post is like on a such a, a lower scale than than some other people's because like I'm too busy like planning out little details and stuff that like nobody will ever see or hear about but I'm like thinking <laughs> about and I'm like what is you know what is all this nonsense and I'm like I have like sheets and sheets of, of nonsense sketches that may or may not ever plan out or if I'm drawing a scene I'm like drawing the little shapes of the trees to see if they will all work and yeah I don't know some people right. Can just right some people can just go at it whip out a painting or two a day and just like kind of go at it really carefree but yeah I've been yeah, I can kind of feel your planning. <laughs> yeah, I totally understand that. It's because, like, even when I look back at my uh, uh, previous words, I realized, you know, a lot of stuff is too over detailed. There's a lot of textures mm -hmm. everywhere. So uh, it's definitely a learning process. So now you're showing us so. a bit into the 3D side of things, and I see this is Blender. Yeah, uh, I don't want you and Dimitri to hate me, but uh, I jumped from Cinema 4D to Blender. Really? <laughs> That's because, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the tools are so much... I mean, I, I, like for a concept artist, the tool, all the tools are there to make it easier and to make things uh, faster for you. Awesome. And plus, Blender has a... And Blender is free, right? Yeah, yeah Blender is completely free. I think it's too good to Hear that everybody free, watching, but, this, uh, this program that he's using to make these awesome cinematic images is free. <laughs> you don't yeah, need to go buy you, some $3,000, you know, Maya or S-Max package. <laughs> right, and uh, the way the render works in this... Uh, the built-in render works in Blender. It works just like Keyshot, if you have like a specific plugin. I, 
Okay, so that isn't in there by default, but you can, do you have to buy that additional plugin or, or is that free somewhere? Um, it's on Gumroad. I, I believe it's pretty cheap, like about $10. Awesome. Yeah. Well, hopefully yeah, you so, can help me hook me up with that link we can include in the video if anybody wants to check it out. Oh yeah, for sure. This is awesome. I didn't know, I didn't know Blender had that sort of capability. Yeah, Blender has so much uh, power to it. Even the new update, it's going to have its own real-time render, just like how Unreal Engine has it. Oh, wow. So, so it's going to be a big game changer. Awesome. So, I'm, of course, now that I know this, I'm going to have to have you back on a future episode to give us a brief overview of oh, yeah. Blender. <laughs> you can give us a little walkthrough on that. Yeah, sure. That would be amazing. So, so explain here what's what's going on with your, what you're seeing now. All right, so right now, this is just like a uh, demonstration of how I set up my scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, what I like to do is I like to spend about like an hour to two hours a day making pre-made assets. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the cool thing about Blender is that you can load all of them in pretty instantly. So uh, in, in this scene, I'm just showing an example of me just loading in uh, stuff I've made, just trying to put everything together. So you built all the little individual um, assets in your scene that we're seeing rendered out kind of at the bottom. Yeah. Awesome. You're building so yourself then, a little 3D library. Yep, pretty much. It's just a... Because 3D, you can get lost in a lot of details in 3D. So for me, I try to limit that by providing myself stuff that I've already made. Yeah. It just shortens the time. It just makes everything so much faster. Well, I think too. That's that's what I exercise when I when if I'm using 3D, it, it 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 always gives you more information than you'll probably need, you know, when you export it or or go to make it a final. And it, a lot of the artistry I feel comes in like how you can use color and light and stuff to hide the unnecessary. Because a really clean 3D render will always give you so much information. Oh, it does, and. Uh... Plus, when you go into post-processing, you realize, man, I'm only just going to simplify this part. So, you know, mm -hmm. I waste a lot of time just detailing this part of the in the 3D phase. Now, do you ever use any pre-made or, you know, existing assets that people put out online for free or that you can download, you know, kit bash sets that you ever got into any of that? Or do you pretty much strictly use your own um, your own creations? Uh, I've done both. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, done, I've done my own creations more. It's just that, like... Uh, like if it's something, if the design is timeless, you know, like a classical Roman thing, yeah, or uh, whatever it is, then I'll I'll definitely take full advantage of that. As for the, uh, as for stuff that's specifically designed to somebody's shape language, I try to, I, I, I try to stay away from that trend for a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just that I I, I want to wait a little while until I I want to start using those. And that, that's just my personal taste because. Yeah. Uh, Right now, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to figure out my design language. I'm still trying to, you know, figure out what defines me. So, in order to avoid having stuff that looks like other people's or having their stuff influence me, I just try to, you know, focus on my own stuff at the moment, at least. <laughs> so this is a really, uh, this is a pretty impressive scene. You got a lot of nice detail in here, and I see now you're actually in Cinema 4D. Yeah, this is actually an earlier piece, so I uh, went back to this one. Ah, uh, okay. How how long would you say that it, you know, modeling time, either hours or days, did it take you to kind of construct this, you know, from your initial plan? Let's see, before, uh, I was pretty, so this took about an entire week just to figure out, you know, if, I, if, I, if I were to be honest. As for the newer scenes, it only took me about maybe a day or two, so, yeah, it's just, because uh, the more you figure out... Uh, how to plan stuff and how to make better decisions then it just becomes faster and this sort is did i see this is the corona render for this yeah i was awesome. uh i was an evangelist for corona render at the time as well i i think aside from octane it was one of the best ones for uh and especially since it was free as well oh corona yeah, was that was that the demo they put out or like the trial version that that didn't didn't expire really Oh, no, it was uh, completely free for Cinema 4D users. Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah it was in the alpha testing. So they uh, pretty much let anybody who had Cinema 4D use it for free. So you ex let me take a second to come back here. This is what the uh, raw the raw 3D looked like, right? Um, I just had it there. As you, you exported it uh, from Cinema, right? Yeah. Right here. Yeah, that was... 
That was straight from Cinema 4D. Now, do you do lots of render passes and composite them, or do you just kind of paint on top of one pass like this? Oh, yeah, I do a lot of render passes. I feel like that workflow uh, becomes really flexible and makes it uh, really easy on you to paint. So, as it, you can see here... This is a light pass, right? That you just you rendered out the same thing, but you turned on some lights in the scene. Yeah. And uh, the cool thing about Corona Render is that it has this post-process feature where you can turn on and off your lights. Even if uh, you don't, have, so you don't have to go back and re-render your scene with and without the lights. Oh, well, that is yeah, that so is that was, cool. Yeah, so that was really intuitive. So, uh, and this is the atmospheric pass. Mm -hmm. This is the one I. Uh, this is more of a Z depth that I rendered from uh, Cinema 4D. Okay, and, uh, so this at this kind of darkened, you know, some of the the shadows and stuff. Yeah. So, uh, generally, when I do render passes, I always. Uh, render an ID, like a surface ID, mm -hmm. to kind of select things better. Um, an indirect pass for like the, just like the ambient light, and mm -hmm. then uh, any direct light in the atmosphere, and uh, that's pretty much all I need to get myself started. Okay, awesome. And so now, is about now when the actual uh, painting and the post-processing aspect would, would kind of work? Yeah. This is, uh, you know, everything is just there because the cool thing about render passes is that you can control how much you want it and how much you don't want it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do. And uh, generally, when I post browses, I always uh, the first step I always take is try to break up the CG look as much as I can. So yeah. That way, it's look too 3D. Now, did the, these people I see that jumped in here now are they all just done with with photo uh, manipulation, or did you? Yeah. I just, yeah, I just threw in the photo in there just to see how mm -hmm. I want the idea to look. I think they look great. That's a very uh, you you kind of got really lucky with that camera angle on them. That they look they look like they should be there, which is awesome. Oh, thank you. Yeah, so uh, I threw them in there, and then along the way, they uh, had to get cut. Yeah, they just had to get cut. Even though uh, it would have been better to add some more story driven stuff into the scene, mm -hmm. but I just felt like I I just wanted to get this done and. Uh, so now you're, you're honest, changing up some of the geometry too. Yeah, because uh, sometimes, uh, well, like the without the concrete wall, it looked a little bit boring with just the gate and the mm -hmm. the barrel. So I figured, all right, just throw in the concrete wall. And uh, yeah, well, I don't know about you, but characters, like I don't, I never have a problem painting portraits. But when I'm painting characters in the environment scene, they just seem like a super dry process. Yeah, it's something I always say for last. Um, Regardless if I plan certain characters to be in the scene from the start, there's something I always just do last. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, all, well, for me, because they're, they're like a hard to work, because usually the environment can look really, really good, and unless um, yeah, I can find some good tricks to get the characters up at that same level and in a timely manner, I think getting in the, budgeting the time to get them to look that nice is, is the tricky part. But yeah, um, but they're also a product kind of of the environment. They're going to be affected by the environment in every certain way. So I like to have the environment figured out first for that reason. Yeah, that's very true. So that's something I have to pick up on in the next few pieces. So this is uh, this is another piece you worked on, the power plant. Yeah, for uh, this is actually the very last piece I've worked on. Mm -hmm. I I finished. I I, I worked. I wanted to call this project done because I've been working on it for a couple months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I figured, all right, you know what? Because uh, I looked back at all my pieces, and I was I said, you know what? Uh, None of these really stand out. Some uh, maybe I should do something with a more a clear or better subject matter, or something that has a little bit of a design to it. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, I don't want to spend too much time on it too. So I just skipped out the three D phase and uh, wanted you to photo. You started everything. this one then from from uh, kind of like a, a photo base. Yeah. Right. What if we go back? That's something. Yeah, like this, and then you just uh, basically color corrected and then painted it in. Well, that's that. Yeah, that seems like a very good way of working as well. Yeah, because a lot of my uh, workflow comes from learning 3D a lot. Because mm -hmm. uh, so like playing around with channels, well, with like reflection maps in 3D, yeah, uh, kind of influences how I manipulate my channels in Photoshop. And, and uh, yeah, because I, I hardly ever paint 
or photo bash without any 3d so i figured you know uh since this is a project where i want to challenge myself i should uh you know finish my last piece with just a photo bash or with something uh starting off of a photo plate yeah it seems like your knowledge of that and how and how you understand how light kind of works in this in these types of you know scenes and settings really helped kind of di- you know dictate and direct how how it kind of played out here like you know you knew to put like oh it's going to look better if i add some atmosphere like some some light fog or mist back here and you know how you can color dodge the light on the up the side of the of the wall for instance yeah thank you it's uh because i i had a bit of a tough time learning light but then uh, a friend of mine just broke down the uh, the process in a very scientific way and it just made a lot more sense so uh, uh like we i kind of think of it as layering yeah that's what i yeah it, 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 getting uh one of the, I think the hardest things for any artist to kind of conquer or, or to learn to achieve is like that volumetric look of lighting, you know, that 3D presence of lighting. So something, unless you're going for a cartoon, right? You, do, it, It's hard for, <laughs> for a lot of people to break away from that flat lighting type of look to, in, the, in their three, in their, uh, you know, in their paintings. Yeah, because growing up, I was taught just fog everything, just fog everything in the background. That's mm-hmm. it. But I realized there's, uh, you know, going outside, I realized there's a lot more to that. Like, yeah. uh, if you look near where the sun is, uh, the fog is a lot more amplified in that area mm-hmm. than anywhere else. So that's what that's something new I learned. And I said, "Oh, okay. Maybe if I apply that to where uh, these light sources are, then yeah, uh, you got you, know, you can never shut off the the observation uh, side of our, our um, you know our brain, especially as creatives. Like you always have to take lots of notes, mental notes, and put things to practice. And I'm sorry, folks. I have a uh, very angry dog and an infant upstairs. That's just my life as as an artist now. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways, very, so Ryan, you're adding a lot of uh, additional elements to this now. I'll go back. Yeah. Oh. Here. Yeah. It's funny because uh, without the mechs, I decided to call it done. I said, you know what, this is fine. Uh, time to call it done. But when I when I came back to it, I was like, nah, that looks pretty whack. So. Let's uh let's add something let's add something better to it. And then uh I looked back at my notepad and I drew I made like a quick sketch of a mech, nothing too intricately uh design So I said, you know, I never did a mech, so let's toss that in and see how it looks. So I painted up silhouette, just added some light details on it, and I said, Oh, okay, this is looking a little decent, so uh why not just finish it up? Yeah, this piece really seemed like it evolved kind of organically for you. And it just kind of like if you yeah. felt you felt that you went in that direction, which is which is awesome. I always like pieces that can kind of do that. They get a life of their own during the process. But yeah, these mechs look legit. I I, I wouldn't have, and again I I wouldn't have been able to tell you if you did 3D or not on them. And I think that's that sign of you know good artistry there. Like you, if if you can blend the painting, the 3D, and the photos together seamlessly, then like I think you're doing something right. No, I guess a, a lot a lot of it has to do with just understanding materials. Like I'm not a master at it, but uh, I, I guess I have a general idea to kind of get me started. Yeah, and I think that's that's where uh, a lot of people run into problems. I, I have a lot of my own students ask me, like, oh, do you have a formula or some kind of guidelines for using photos in your work? And stuff, and it's just like I don't know. It depends ultimately what you're going for. Some people, it's definitely okay to show photos, and some situations, it is okay. Other people take more of an artistic approach for them, and if they use photos, they want to cover their tracks. So I think it definitely comes down to the individual and what you're looking to get out of your piece. Oh yeah, definitely. It's a uh, uh, definitely a style. So is there um is there a story behind this particular piece or how it, this one here even relates to some of your other ones? Is it, it's I assume it's all set in the same little universe, and and sequence, right? Well, it's basically the story is just pretty simple and cliche. It's just you know America irra- irradiated, and uh, you know it got split up into d- two divisions, and then uh, this division they're focused heavily on military because they're resources, so they want to be able to uh, dominate the other people and just take their stuff. So I figured, you know, uh, I don't have any military X information in any of my previous paintings, except for maybe for one. So, you know, why not throw something with that element in there for the last piece? So for this one, 
it's more of like a you know like an outside warehouse where you can just charge up or fix uh, the next idea. So what would you call the beauty pass? I see that gets labeled on on some of these. Uh, the beauty pass is just the uh, the raw render. Yeah, just straight from Cinema 4D. The rain's a nice touch. I like that. Yeah, I was just. I think I just got the new photo pack from Photo Bash. I realized, uh, you know, why not put that into some use? Honestly, right, so for uh, that particular piece, I felt like well, I made that. Uh, I think like a couple months back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I look when I look back, I kind of figured the lighting was a little bit weird. So that's why I made that second iteration at the end. And that's just what we're kinda... seeing here, right? Yeah. And you simplified things, so you know that. So, uh, the sky felt a little bit too weird. Yeah, that's something I have to work on definitely. Cause, uh, I'm so used to over de- detailing everything, and then uh, when I look back, I realize you know what, some stuff can definitely be left uh, simplified. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm pretty sure later down the road, it'll save a lot of time as well. This scene came out great too. I love the uh, the atmosphere that you painted in there. And so these are the, these are the four finals from from your your project, right? Yeah. So these are the four pieces that I like out of uh, you know probably ten or twenty pieces that I did <laughs> out of the project. And I guess that's just concept art. Yeah, you know? right. For everything you yeah. see, or for anything anybody ever sees on a project like a game or a movie, there's always hundreds of pieces behind them that the public never sees. Oh yeah, because uh, I have the art book of uh, Avatar. And there's just so many production paintings and drawings that I would have never seen online. So that's just generally... If you were to give a few tips to someone looking to get into this keyframe art, uh, what, what would you advise them to do? Like, wh- where would they begin? Should they learn 3D? Should they focus on art fundamentals? Yes. Yeah, work on the fundamentals at the same time to get yourself a subject matter. Uh, learn some design as well. Mm-hmm. You know, whether that storytelling or set dressing or uh, design art surface so like if you're studying perspective drawing then draw a lot of geometric shapes and draw uh, learn how to cut shapes learn how to manipulate edges and then just kind of like design a car or something you know just mm-hmm. something to give you a subject matter to work off of and then eventually as you go you know you'll you'll learn along the way mm-hmm yeah, because like th- there's there's a lot of different disciplines I would say that goes into something like this. There's obviously composition. There's there's like there's cinematic lighting. There's uh, you know there's narrative design. Uh, you know there's in, there's industrial design elements in there as well. You know when you break it down to your mechs, when you break it down to the uh, the, the placement of the jeeps and stuff. There's there's a lot of this is the sum of like a lot of smaller disciplines. Oh yeah, definitely. This is uh because for me like I. Well, I didn't uh, learn everything from a straight shot. I had to like zigzag around a lot because mm-hmm. so I didn't have the right kind of guidance. Uh, you just uh, developed myself as an artist, so I had to f- figure. Uh, I had to realize, okay, I have to take a step back and learn this because that's why I'm having a hard time uh, doing this and that. Yeah, so and, I, uh, I think troubleshooting your own work or being able to look at your image objectively to ask yourself what is not working about this so that you can go back and, and study or fill in the gaps, right, of, of what is just looking out of place or not up to the quality of, of the, the work you're aiming to achieve. Right, right. And, that, and I think uh, that's, that's a tough thing for a lot of people to do. It definitely is. If Because uh, for me, I think it... Because I, I had a lot of conflicts and issues too, as an uh, as an artist. Because just seeing so many awesome work online, it's like, oh, I'm never going to be as good as them. So, and then uh, you know, you just have to tell yourself, you know what, uh, you just got to keep pushing through, just keep learning. And uh, as soon as you feel like you have, if if you make a piece and you feel like something is wrong with it, then you should just take that immediate step to go back and try to, you know, troubleshoot everything. And yeah. I think that way you learn uh, a lot faster. Yeah, that's definitely a very you know a sound piece of advice, and you, you gotta always just like if something's not working, don't go work on. Or I think the go-to thing for a lot of uh, beginner artists is if something's not working or they don't know how something works in their scene, they'll just go start detailing something small in their scene they're more comfortable with, and then they'll keep repeating that process yeah. until you have you have a full scene that's tons of like detail everywhere. But the sum of all the parts are just not adding up to make a nice, strong, cohesive image. Yeah, definitely. That's uh, that's just like 
uh, pretty much like drawing with the bangs over one eye and the hands behind the back kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. Or or the feet yeah. behind, uh, you know, something. Like yeah, Standing yeah. in tall grass or in the water or we, we've all done that. It's just like, how do we hide something awkward or, you know, avoid something confrontational that, you know, internally gives us uh, struggle? Yeah, exactly. So uh, for anybody out there who's struggling with that stuff, you know, we've all been through it. So... You know, I'm just trying to and you just gotta help out how your, I can. Yeah, and you just got to face your problems head on and embrace them and, and don't be afraid to fail, uh, you know, making lots of bad images. I see artists that are too afraid to make a bad image. It's like, well, that's part of the process. Oh, definitely. Because as, as somebody who's learning a lot or who's still learning too, like I've realized what's, uh, you know, separates the professional is just uh, being able to fail better decisions. Very nice. With Not that I'm saying I'm anywhere near. <laughs> oh. All right. Thank you for coming on and talking to us about this today. It's been a pleasure. Oh, dude, thank you. Uh, I really, it's really an honor to be on here. And yeah, we're gonna have a link to your portfolio in the uh, description, as well as the you know the the Blender plugin and uh, of course the photo ref site that you you like and prefer. So if anyone else wants to kind of experiment with this stuff and head down this path, that's where you'd be able to kind of find some of those at least those initial resources. But uh, thank you for watching. Leave us, leave myself or Ryan a, a question in the, the comments section if you'd like. And yeah, take care. Thanks for watching, particularly if you made it to the end here. If you'd like to support the channel, please like, share, and comment. You can find me on Facebook, ArtStation, and Instagram. Now, I share different content on each platform, so feel free to stalk me across the web to join the Brush Sauce community as linked below. We do Hangouts, have a Discord channel, host challenges, and support each other in artistic growth. Finally, if you'd like to inquire about my one-on-one -on -one mentorship program, head over to tyleredlinart.com, click on the mentorship tab for information, and shoot me an email. Also, I run two courses at the Computer Graphics Master Academy. Feel free to check out those as well. Take care.